are very important to space flight success for a number of reasons. One is that, you know, when, when we leave Earth's orbit in any kind of capacity, we'll take plants with us. I mean, they're part of our uh, exploration heritage, if you will. It's, uh, they do things for us from the perspective of they recycle all of our things that we don't use and they provide things that we do use. They use our carbon dioxide that we get rid of. They recycle our water, recycle our air, and of course they provide us food in the terms of carbohydrates that they, uh, that they metabolize. But also, plants are important because they give us um, some insights into the fundamental nature of what we would call eukaryotes or, or higher organisms because plants, just like people, are what we call higher organisms. And so learning a lot about the metabolism of plants in a sort of an easy environment also tells us things about ourselves. A lot of the research that we and others have, have done on, um, for space flight and also for what we call closed system ecologies for um, advanced life support systems and things, you do now see, especially in things like closed environments like greenhouses. So some of the technologies that have been developed for growing plants on, on a colony or on a space station are now used in commercial greenhouses to be, make them more efficient, to save time and resources, and of course on Earth money. One of the things that is particularly nice for my colleague Rob Furl and I is that we've been in the spaceflight business for a little while now. And what that has allowed us to do is to treat the spaceflight environment like any other terrestrial environment in a way. Because a scientist explores an environment, you ask how your plants or whatever are responding to that environment, and then you test a hypothesis, get those answers, form another hypothesis on the basis of that, and, and so on and so forth. Our access to the space station and also the space shuttle back in, back in the day has allowed us to keep this continuity going. Um, our very first space flight experiments was on the shuttle, STS-93, and it allowed us to answer one particular question. We took that answer and we put that up on the space station, and that allowed us to answer another set. The examples that came back from that experiment now have allowed us to develop another set of experiments that will go up on SpaceX-3. And so this having this continuity and having the access to the orbital environment by scientists like ourselves is what really brings the science around and what really puts it forward um, in the scientific community. And that's the power of having access and utilization of the space station now that it's a, it's a laboratory. So our newest experiment, which we call CARA, for a C-A-R-A, uh, for characterizing Arabidopsis root attractions, stems from this idea that um, how do we tell uh, the, the major impact of light on how roots grow? And so a very simple thing to do is we could grow plants in the same kind of square petri plates that we grew for our other experiment, just out in the environment of the space station. And so the idea will be that we'll just take a number of these plates and they just get tacked right up to the wall of the, uh, the space station and one of the, the habitats that get the ambient lighting, which will be diffuse and coming from, from everywhere. And we'll also set up a comparable set of plants that are wrapped in black cloth. And so they'll start germinating on orbit, but they'll be completely wrapped up in the dark. And so we'll compare the plants on orbit growing with uh, diffuse lighting and ones that are growing without any lighting at all and that's the basis of this particular experiment. It's very simple, um, but very elegant, we think, in uh, utilizing the resources that we have at hand that can answer some of the fundamental questions that our previous flight experiment brought up. One of the things that we use in these Arabidopsis plants is they're engineered with a green fluorescent protein marker. And so a number of the genes in which we're interested are tagged, if you will, with, with this green fluorescent protein. And so, um, any particular place where the normal gene would be expressed, this, this fluorescent tag gene now will also be expressed. And so that's something you can see. And you can see in real time with the, the uh, Abers unit, the green fluorescent protein imager that we have on orbit. But we can't see the kind of resolution that you would really like. And so all that you can see, well, OK, there's portions of the root that are green, or there's portions of the, the leaf that are green. But you can't tell what cells are going on in there. We know that there are certain types of cells in the roots, in particular, that are uh, play an important role in gravity sensing and signaling. And so what we'd like to be able to see is which specific cells are these genes being expressed. And the only way to do that is with microscopy. And so now, with the um, accessibility to the LMM, that will allow us to see in orbit where these genes are being um, expressed and how that is changing in response to that environment.